Good morning, Ohana friends. Today we are going to do a nice hip opening and balance flow with a little bit of upper body strength. So it's gonna be a little bit of a shorter flow today, so only expect about 20 to 30 minutes. And we're gonna start by standing at the top edge of our mat. So bringing the, the heels right underneath the hips, we'll start to rock back and forth, just kind of getting that grounding connection from the soles of the feet. And then next time that the heels are heavy into the earth, we'll lift the toes up towards the sky and then press them down, almost as if you're just mushing them into the mat. Find a soft bend in the knees here. We're gonna take our pelvis and tilt it slightly forward so that you can feel that nice long line of energy from the back body. Roll the shoulders up towards the ears and then retract, pull them together as tightly as you can from the back body and then saddle them down away from the ears. Palms open towards the front of the room and last little piece here, imagine that string from the top of the head. We're just gonna pull it up, finding as much length in the body as we can. We're gonna take about five slow, deep breaths here. All the way into the belly. And all the way out. Breathing down all the way to the pelvic floor. And finding a full release. Three more at your own pace. Awesome. Keep this conscious connection to your breath as we continue to flow throughout this practice. I'm going to warm up the wrists a little bit here. So balling them up, making a fist. We're going to inhale and roll the arms up towards the ceiling. Wrist rolls all the way up. Then star the fingers open at the top. Reverse the roll as you come all the way down. Beautiful. Reverse the roll once again. Keep the fingers open. Roll the wrists all the way up. Make a fist overhead. Reverse the roll and take it all the way back down. Beautiful. Bring your fists here to your shelf, just to that space above the tailbone. On an inhale, start to press your hips forward. Look up and lean back. Feel the support of the hands. Now let the nose be in line with the navel here for standing Ustrasana. We're going to pull the shoulders together and then take a deep breath down to the pelvic floor and all the way out. Awesome. Next inhale, we'll bring the torso back through to center. As you exhale, slide the hands down the backs of the legs and take that forward fold. Now it's morning here, so I know I'm feeling a little bit tighter depending on what time you're practicing. Maybe you are too. So just let the knees bend as generously as you need to and the upper body is just going to be nice and heavy here. We can take some free movement if you would like to reach for opposite elbows. Maybe sway from side to side. I know personally for myself, I like to tent up my fingertips and just kind of Pedal out the legs a little bit here, pulling one hip back and then the other. Just take some movement that you feel is necessary for your body to loosen up. Making sure you're evened out and then coming back into stillness here, taking one more nice deep forward fold. On an inhale lift to Ardha Uttanasana or halfway rise. Pull up from the crown of the head, press back from the tailbone. Fill the lungs once again. Exhale, forward fold. See if you can create a little bit more depth here. Deep bend in the knees, plant the palms. We'll step back with the left foot and then the right coming into that high plank, just momentarily. We're gonna shift the weight forward onto the shoulders and onto the toes and then drop the knees down to the mat. Inhale, lift the tailbone up towards the ceiling as you exhale, chin and chest melt down towards the earth. On your next in-breath, we're going to lengthen out the legs and then roll the chest open for Cobra or Vajrangasana. Now again, here we can take a little bit of movement. I like to kind of sway from side to side. Maybe you want to peek over one shoulder and then the other to integrate the neck. Just find what kind of feels good in the lumbar. And then once again, coming back into stillness once you are centered out. Inhale, lift up a little bit higher, then exhale, roll the chest slowly back down towards the earth. From here, let's take the hands back about one handprint so that they're directly underneath the shoulders. 
Curl under the toes, fill the lungs. Exhale, press up into your high plank. Full breath in. Exhale, hips high for Adho Mukha Savasana or downward facing. And we can start to pedal it out here. Again, you can feel free to take any movement that feels necessary for your body. And then we're going to work with a concept called Siddha Sukham, which is stability with ease and comfort. So once you are done pedaling it out, we can come back into a nice stable position. Lift the hips up nice and high, press the heart back towards the thighs. And I want you to focus on externally rotating your shoulders here. So we're not collapsing through the shoulders, but we're broadening through the scapulas and pulling the outer edges towards the edges of the mat. Now we're gonna come into that ease and comfort with stability. So take three deep breaths in your downward dog without moving. Resist the urge to edify the pose in any way. Just breathe. Wonderful. Inhale, lift that right heel up towards the ceiling. Here we're going to bend the knee and allow the hip to open. So we come into the scorpion dog. We're thinking about heel to glute, knee to sky. We can hold here in stability, or if you would like, you can add a little circle out through the knee. Reverse directions. Find stability here. And then re-lengthen the heel from the hip. As you exhale, take a big step forward so that that right foot lands right where the right hand is. And then we're going to lower that left knee down to the mat and untuck the toes. From here, we're going to loosen up the hamstring a little bit. So we're going to start to rock from front to back, working with a nice dynamic movement here before we take any static. Awesome. The next time that the weight comes back into the knee, we'll pause here in this low lunge. Let the hips be nice and heavy, and on an inhale, sweep the arms up towards the ceiling. Now think about pulling this left hip towards the front of the room and the right hip towards the back, and then finding an extra little lift up from the torso just to really open up the front where those hip flexors live on that left leg. Breathe deeply all the way into the pelvic floor and all the way out. One more breath. Inhale, pull up from the fingertips. As you exhale, take the hands down to the inside of that right leg. From here, we're going to heel toe that right foot out so that we have a little bit more room. And we're going to work into that lizard lunge. So I like to kind of take a little bit of a rocking motion through my pelvis first, just to make sure that my hip is aware that we're about to do something here. Just kind of warming it up. When you feel that that's enough, you can come back into stillness. Now we have a couple options. If you're already feeling a nice stretch here through the hip, you can choose to stay lifted. We can start by coming down to the outer arm first, maybe holding here, and maybe we can bring that inner arm down as well. Now to add a little bit of depth, we can bring the weights to the pinky toe side of the foot and kind of let that knee just fall open to the side. One last step here. If you have some more room, we can curl under those back toes and find an extension from that back leg. And again, breathing deeply, nice and horizontally, and really let that rib cage expand, and then feel the whole body just contract as you push that air up and out. One more round. If the back leg was extended, we're going to lower the knee back down using the right hand first. Press yourself back up to center. From here, that right leg is just going to swing around to meet the left. And here we are in that quadruped position. Make sure that you're nice and stacked so that the shoulders are directly beneath the wrists. And the knees are directly underneath the hips. 
On an inhale, drop the belly, open the heart towards the front of the room. As you exhale, we're going to bend back onto the knees, bend the elbows, and see if you can get the forehead to touch the mat. Inhale, lift it forward, drop the belly, open the chest. Exhale, drop it back. One more here. Inhale. And exhale. Beautiful. Next full breath in. Drag the weight back into the shoulders. I'm going to press down through that left knee and the right hand. On an inhale, shoot that le right leg back and reach through those left fingertips. So now we have this nice spinal balance. If it's helpful, you can take your left palm to your belly and then scoop that belly button up towards the spine. You should feel a protraction then from the right shoulder. So it's pressing up towards the sky, kicking back from the right heel, and then add that nice long reach. Breathe deeply here. Squeeze that right glute. Notice if the right hip is tilting up towards the ceiling and see if you can keep them as level as possible. Two more breaths. Inhale here. Exhale, lower the left palm down to the mat. We're going to take that right leg and step it over to the left side. Top of the foot comes down to the earth. We're just going to slide ourselves back here for a pigeon variation. So you can take your hands over towards the shin bone and then just push yourself kind of off the mat and let the body rest over that thigh. Now we can stay lifted here if we're feeling a little tight or you can choose to ground down from the head, whatever is necessary. And then take three nice, slow, deep breaths. Finishing out the bottom of your last exhale. When you're ready to breathe in, lift the upper body back to center. We're going to walk the hands in place where we think they're going to be underneath the shoulders first. And then drag that right leg back in line. We'll reach it out nice and long. And then let it tuck back underneath the hip. Beautiful. Curl under the toes. Full breath in. Exhale for Adho Mukha Savasana or downward facing. Go ahead and paddle it out here if you need to. Lift up from the hips, press back from the chest, three deep breaths. Wonderful. On your next inhale, we're going to roll the spine forward, so lift up from the heels. Tuck your chin towards your chest, and then one vertebrae at a time, begin to drag yourself forward in towards that high plank position. Head is the last thing to extend. Full breath in. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. We're going to hold and hover here. So deep breath in. Full breath out. One more. Full breath in. Full breath out. Inhale, press back up. High plank. Exhale, downward facing dog. Three breaths. Beautiful. Inhale, extend that left heel up towards the ceiling. And then go ahead and bend the knee and allow that hip to open. So the right hip internally rotates towards the center of the mat. Now again, we can stay here in stability. Or we can start to take some knee circles, ringing out into that hip joint a little further. Whatever calls to you, if you're taking the circles, make sure that you reverse the direction. Eventually coming back into stillness, lengthen out the hip first. On your next exhale, take a big step forward. Left hand lands where the left, or left foot lands where the left hand is. Right knee comes down to the earth. Go ahead and frame the left leg, untuck the back toes, and then we'll ring up that hamstring. So just rocking again from front to back. Next. 
next time that the weight comes into the knee, we're gonna pause here. Let the hips sink nice and low. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Now again, pressing up from the hips so that right hip pulls forward, left one pulls back. Find that little lift up from the torso to really elongate the back body and then add the arms. Breathe here, down to the pelvic floor, horizontal breath. So we're not vertically or apically breathing. We want to make sure that we're letting the body open on the inhale and gently close on the exhale. Inhale, pull up from the fingertips. Exhale, your hands come to the inside of that left leg. We're gonna heel toe it out, coming into that lizard lunge once again. If you'd like to take that little bit of roll or rock through the hips, any organic movement that feels good. And then finding spitta, stability. We're gonna press into the palms. We can choose to stay right here. Otherwise, leading with that right arm, we're gonna bend down to the forearm. Maybe we can allow the left arm to touch. Maybe we want to bring the weight to the pinky toe side of the foot to let the knee open up. And last step, maybe we want to curl under the back toes, find an extension from the back leg. Stop at whatever variation suits your body and take three deep breaths. If your back leg is lifted, go ahead and lower the knee down, inside arm presses up first, and then the outer arm, and we're just gonna take that left leg and swing it around to meet the right, once again, coming into that tabletop position, stacking yourself up so that you're nice and even. We're just gonna flow through cat-cow here. So inhale, drop the belly, open the heart, really pull the shoulders back towards the hips. And then exhale, round, chin to chest, tailbone towards the forehead, two more with your own breath. Finishing out that last exhale and then coming back to a nice neutral spine. Inhale as you press back from that left heel and then reach forward with that right arm. Now you can do this intrinsically or use the palm to press the navel up towards the spine. Create that line, slight protraction from the left shoulder here and then reach long from that right hand. Now again, don't let the left hip cock up. Keep it nice and level and breathe. Let the right hand come back down to the mat. Take the left leg over to the right side of the mat. Top of the foot comes down and then slide it all the way back. We're gonna turn our body slightly over. I need to adjust a little bit because of my dresser here. And then just turn your hands over that shin so that you can kind of rest down here into that pigeon pose of your choice. So belly can stay slightly lifted from the thigh. Maybe we can fold a little bit deeper. And once again, three full breaths. Use the strength of that next inflow of oxygen to lift yourself back up. We're going to place the hands once again into a point on the mat where we think our shoulders will be directly over. And then just drag that left leg back in line with the hip. Leap, lift it out nice and long, then slowly lower it back down. Beautiful job. Curl under the toes, full breath in. Exhale, Adho Mukha Savasana, or downward facing dog. This time we're going to look between our fingertips, bend the knees generously, and lift the tailbone up. So you're going to see how far you can squat, and then lift the hips back up towards the ceiling. So once again, inhale here. Exhale, bend the knees, send the tailbone back. Inhale, lift it up. 
Exhale, send it down. One more time. Beautiful. Come back to a nice lifted position. Shift your gaze between the hands. Now we have an option to float here. We can bend the knees just as we did and take a little hop forward. Beautiful. Inhale, lift to that halfway rise. Exhale, bow. Create that depth. Soft bend in the knees here, full breath in, sweep the arms all the way up, and exhale your hands to the heart center. Three slow, deep pelvic floor breaths. Wonderful. Start to press down through the right sole of the foot. We're going to pull that left knee up towards the chest as high as you can. So press down from the right sole of the foot and pull that left knee up. Flex the left foot so that we keep it engaged. Take a deep breath in. Exhale and bring it open out to the side. Nice external rotation. Now we're going to take that sole of the foot and see where we can bind it onto our leg coming into our tree pose. Press the hips forward here. Now we're going to work on an, a, a Brahmana effect here, so energizing the body. So we're going to increase our inhale. So we're going to start by inhaling to the count of five. So when you're ready, full breath in for five, four, three, two, one. Exhale, just let it go. Now we're going to inhale for the count of six. Exhale, let it go. Inhale for the count of seven. Exhale, let it go. Inhale for the count of eight. Exhale, let it go. Beautiful. Now we can stay working on our tree pose, pressing our hips forward or adding that option for a double balance. We're going to take this ankle and bring it on top of the knee and then reach the hands forward as you take a nice deep bend back into the hips. So that we're coming into a standing figure four. You can always bring the hands to heart center. I just find reaching out in front kind of helps counterbalance a little bit. So it's a little bit more um, inclusive for everybody. Hold strong. You may feel those stabilizer muscles in the right foot start to turn on. Breathe through it. One more round. All the way in. And all the way out. Wherever you are, inhale, come back up to center, exhale, unwind, and come into Tadasana. So palms face the front of the room, and we're just going to kind of cultivate that same stance as we did in the beginning of class. So tailbone presses down towards the mat, shoulders have a slight retraction so that we're nice and open, and we'll breathe here. Preparing to balance out the body here. Coming to the other side. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, your hands through the heart center. Press down through the left sole of the foot. Pull the right knee up into the chest. Flex the foot. Remember, press down and pull up so we have those grounding oppositions. Deep breath in. Exhaling for that external rotation. Press the pelvis forward. Full breath in. Exhale, bind the sole of the foot. So find a point of contact on the leg. And this side may be different. Press the hips forward so we really have that engagement. And then we're going to work again with that Brahmana effect or really energizing through the body. So inhaling for the count of five, four, three, two, one. Exhale, let it go. Inhale for six. Exhale, let it go. Inhale for seven. Exhale, let it go. Inhale for eight. Exhale, let it go. Awesome. Now again, we can stay here working on our tree pose or press the hips forward, 
find that ankle on top of the knee, reach the arms out and take that sit back into the hips. Wherever you are, continue to breathe here. Inhale as you are. Exhale back to Tadasana, standing pose here. Go ahead and shake out the legs a little bit and then find that stillness, three horizontal breaths. On an inhale, sweep the arms up. As you exhale, sink back into Ardha Utkatasana, or half chair pose. Now, a lot of us see this referred as just chair pose, right? But it actually is a half version of the full pose. So we're gonna work towards progressing towards the full pose here. So keeping the arms out longer, take a deep breath in. As you exhale, see how far you can sink down, bringing those glutes towards the ankles. It's going to look different for everybody. Stop where you feel that resistance. Deep breath in. And then however you need to get there, exhale. Bring the hands down in front if you need to, out to the side, and take a seat. Bring the legs out long in front for Pachimottanasana. Release any flesh underneath the bones that you need to. On an inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, hinge forward. Let the knees bend generously here if they need to. And we're going to keep the heart rolling forward. So resist the urge to round right away. We want to keep the back body lengthened and active. Keep breathing. Full breath in. Exhale and bow from the upper body. Let go of the weight and just hang heavy here. Three slow breaths. Wonderful. On that next intake, we'll lift the body back to a lifted position. Make sure that your hips are in the center of the mat. If they're not, smooch them there now. We'll reach underneath the thighs and gently roll ourselves onto our back bodies, pulling the knees into the chest. Nice tight squeeze here and then a gentle sway. We'll gently come back into stillness here. We're going to take our right leg. Drop the left sole of the foot down to the mat. So right leg is still bent. We're going to cross it over top of that left knee. Now we want to make sure that the ankle is crossing. From here, we're going to open our arms out to a T and then drop our hips and our knees over towards the left side. Now you may not feel anything intense here. Maybe you do. We have a couple options. For myself, I like to use my left hand on my ankle and I'll gently pull my heel a little bit up towards my groin. And that way, I have a little bit of a deeper stretch through that adductor on the right side. If it's too intense, you can start to lengthen out that leg. So just kind of take this position however feels good for you. Three slow breaths. On your next inhale, release the ankle if you chose to bind. If the leg was lengthened, re-bend and gently pull yourself back into a lifted position. Beautiful. Now from here, we're just going to take that left knee, drag it in towards the chest. Our hands can bind either underneath the thigh, on top of the shin for that figure four. I know for me this is a challenging one, especially on my right side because my right side body and my hip is really tight. 
So just think about pulling the left knee into the chest and pressing the right knee forward, even if it has a sharp angle like mine, just intrinsically putting that motion together will help open up the body. Gently release the grip here. We're going to unwind, right sole of the foot comes back down towards the earth, pick up the left knee, cross it over, same thing, tee out the arms, and then drop the knees and the hips over to the right side. So again, if you're feeling something here, you can choose to stay, otherwise take a bind, right hand comes to the ankle, you can guide it closer towards the groin, and really just let the knee hang heavy. If it's too intense with that bind, you can also lengthen out the right leg. So find what's suitable for you, three breaths. Use your next inhale, release the bind, re-bend the knee if you need to, gently pull the legs back up to a lifted position. So same thing here, we can take a pull, dragging that right knee into the chest, above the chin, below the thigh, whatever is viable for you. Press that right knee into the chest and press the left leg towards the front of the room. Breathe here. Release the grip on the legs, let the right sole re-meet the mat, and then we'll untuck the left leg. Walk the feet so they're, they're about mat width, pinky toes maybe on the edge of the earth, and then we're just going to let the knees cave in together towards one another. Resting our hands onto our belly, just so that we can start to track the breath here. Coming into our relaxation, really let the mind just go where it wants but choosing not to engage. Noticing any stories that have come in, especially as we practice at home. There's a lot of distractions. Seeing if you can pull your awareness back to the breath, back to the rise and the fall of the belly. You can feel free to lay here as long as you deem necessary. Otherwise, start to deepen the breath here. On an inhale, we'll sweep the arms up overhead. We're going to lengthen the legs out, so lift the knees back off one another. Shoot the heels out long from the hips. Let's hook onto the thumbs and make ourselves as long as we can. Full breath in. Full breath out. Gently rolling over to whichever side calls to you today, using the strength of that top hand just to gently press yourself up to a seated position of your choice. Sukhasana, hero's pose, staff pose, whatever, wherever you can go to sit comfortably. We'll bring our hands through to heart center, collectively sealing our practice by breathing in through the nose, and out through the mouth. Bringing our hands to that space between the brow 
and for one more moment here, honoring that expansion of space within the body. That space that provides life and consciousness that goes by so, so many names. From whatever you wish to call that space in me, I honor and recognize that same space in each and every one of you. And that is why together we bow and say, Namaste. I hope you all find yourself healthy and well and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for joining me today.